Watch you guys, got another video here for you. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at what uh, memory is installed in your computer, or my computer, or anyone's computer. Now, if you've installed memory in your computer, say you've installed eight gigabytes, and then a few months later, you want to upgrade to say more memory, or sometimes uh, trying to detect what type of memory that is, or understanding what type of memory that is, and getting the right speeds, and getting the right matched pair, so they don't uh, conflict. Uh, can be quite difficult so I thought I'd show you some steps that you can take to try and uh, detect what type of memory you got now you can either open the case up and pull the memory out that's one way of doing it another way of doing it is to use uh, software uh, which you can install on a computer and another way is using websites and I'll show you all three of these in this video and how to install it so let's take a look at some of the first methods so the website way so even if you don't have Kingston memory installed in your computer, you can use their website to detect what type of memory is installed in your computer. So all you need to do is come to the Kingston website and you go up to the search options, options here and you can see you'll hear uh, computer repair techs and also IT technicians talking about make, model, part number. They are so important when you're trying to find hardware uh, and replaced hardware so make a model and part number you'll hear quite a lot when you're doing this sort of work so here you can see enter the make a model number enter the part number and we'll talk about that and I'll show you what that is a little bit later on in the video so you can see here we've got some other bits and pieces here and we've also got some drop down menus where you can select certain areas here to try and detect what type of memory it is and what you can use to replace it with or upgrade to so you might want to upgrade your system so that's how you can go about doing that they also crucial have a site which also do a great job at detecting memory uh, although I must admit I did try this on my uh, system and it didn't find the type of memory I had on my system so that is when I reverted to this method what I'm going to show you now which was Passmark now Passmark I've got a piece of software that you download and it's free for personal use so as you can see here this is what detected and it gave me a load of information about the memory now this is really important if you want to know what speed your memory is uh, you know what type of voltage is going in there uh, what settings you can use it gives you all of this on here now you may have thrown the packaging away and now this can be quite difficult to determine what that is now you can also go into the bias and it tells you that sort of stuff as well but this is another great way of uh, getting information very quickly there is other software out there but some of them are not that great at detecting what type of memory you're using whereas this actually does a really outstanding job at doing that so let's take a look at the actual software itself I'm going to fire it up I've already got it installed on my system Ramon now you will mention RAM and memory they're both the same thing here in this what you will hear people talking about uh, but as you can see what this does is it does a scan of your system and you can see it tells me the number of memory devices eight which means there's eight slots on this uh, board here and that's because it's an x99 board you might not have that you may only have two or four you know two and four is pretty much normal nowadays but or even one uh, you know slot depends on what type of board you're using um, but as you can see here uh, we've got eight slots now when this first came out this DDR4 it was super expensive and uh, you couldn't afford to uh, obviously put in eight eight lanes of memory uh, at really high value memory say for instance 64 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes it would cost you hundreds and hundreds of pounds because it was expensive so you can see here it's telling us the DDR4 2400 so it's only 2400 megahertz now I could have upgraded this and ditched the 16 gigs that was already in there the four sticks that was in there but I thought if I can match it I can put in the 32 gigabytes uh, with the 16 gigabytes but you need to have the same memory to make sure it's matched and the same to make sure you're not have no problems so uh, again as you can see here G skill tells me what it is you can see 4096 and 8192 that's because the first lot of sticks were four gigs each and the second lot I bought were eight, eight gigs each and let me tell you the price difference was massive compared to what it was when I first bought them first lot of sticks so you can see here the important part the model part which is what we was talking about 
This is really important when you're trying to detect memory. You can see model part and you've got the number here. If you do a search for any of these numbers, which you will see here, you will find your memory, which is in your system. So that way you're not gonna end up with any problems. Now, obviously you can see here, we have some other information, which is very useful. You can see the voltage is exactly the same and you can see we've got uh, differences here. Now, that, I just wanted to stick these in, but as you can see here, uh, you can see these uh, settings are all listed down here. So if you wanted to use this, you could do to uh, use them settings there if you haven't got the packaging anymore. And I can see the uh, DRAM manufacturer was Micron Technology, the first lot, and now it's changed. Here you can see. There's a slightly difference there. So they must have changed companies when they started uh, Hyundai when they uh, changed the company there. But uh, it's quite interesting. So what we're gonna do here is come down and you can see that is the actual information that you're looking for. So you can, ex you can export this and copy it and uh, this will get you all the details that you need to replace your memory. So as you can see, if I go back up here as well, you will see a search button here and you can hit the search for this if you wanted to and see what it uh, brings up. And there you have it, it pulls up that memory. And you can see the actual memory here being detected, it's this one here as well, the uh, Ripjaw 4 series, as you can see. And it does go to the dollars uh, page, it doesn't go to the UK, but I mean, you can actually copy this. And it's looking for that number, that model number as well. Now they have upgraded to their pattern, they've changed it all a little bit here, um, which is the Ripjaw's V series. Uh, but I wanted to try to keep the same memory, save me a uh, waste of a load of money, money, which I've spent out already. But, and I've got plenty of speed in there now as well, and plenty of memory. So let me just uh, close this off and uh, show you what's inside the computer. You can see here, export and copy as well, which allows you to export and copy all the information here by just clicking on this. And you can export it to a HTML file or text file. Very, very useful. Uh, there is loads of other programs, as I said, out there that will do this for you, uh, but some of them are not really accurate and some of them won't detect the memory that you've got. So anyway, let me just show you the next part, which is the actual computer itself. So let's take a look inside the computer here. As you can see, we have four sticks of memory in there. There's four blank slots ready to be filled. And uh, as you can see them here, these are actual sticks of RAM. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at the new sticks which I purchased. Uh, these are the four sticks here. There's two on the front and two on the back. And uh, let's get these uh, up against the other memory. So we'll take a closer look at the actual labels and you'll see you can tell the difference uh, by looking at the labels on the memory. And this is also another good way to detect. And you can see this was uh, built in 2016 August. Uh, as you can see there, this is the new uh, 32 gig stick of memory. And you can see that number along the top there and the part number along the bottom. That's the number that you want to detect. I'll get the old stick up here. And again, if you put them side by side, you can see the older stick was uh, built in 2014 October, as you can see there. Um, but that's um, when the memory was built and you can see the new one, but they both pair up very well and they should be fine working together, as you can see here. But that's how you can detect your memory. You can see the actual numbers are all the same. Now to put this into the computer, it's very simple. You've got a little notch here and you just need to line this up to the notch on the board. Just make sure you pull one of the little levers open here. Now some of them have two and some of them have one. But once you've got that lined up, you just drop her in and you should Put a bit of force on it. it will take a bit of force and you should hear a little tiny crack and that's that slipping in a slot just push it down like so now with these x99 motherboards uh, they're slightly different they rotate the other way on the other side so when you get the memory on these boards you'll see on this one particular i have to flip it around the other way and that should slot in just nicely and it'll be the same process pull the lever back push it into place and push into the socket and you should hear it just click a little bit and that should be pushed in now. I'll just quickly speed this part up. As you can see all the memory is now installed 
and that's pretty much it and that's basically how you can detect what um, uh, memory is installed in your computer my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk if you enjoy these videos guys then hit the like button also hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date and be notified when I upload new videos thanks again for watching I'll see you again in the next video bye for now